So the first talk is uh, by uh, Shujitha Das, and she will be talking about imprint of interacting dark universe on cosmological perturbation. So already we started the pedagogical lecture on perturbation, so it will be relevant for some people. Thank you. Thank you, Shujitha. Can you hear me? So uh, I'll be talking about uh, this imprint of uh, cosmological perturbation on this dark universe. And I will start with this cosmic phi. We have seen this chart many times. So since yesterday we were talking about, or we are uh, going through talks which are mainly concentrating on this dark matter sector. But uh, in our um, dark universe, we have another uh, dominating component, which also um, comprises a large fraction of this uh, dark component and that we term it as dark energy. So we haven't heard about any talk in this uh, conference on dark energy till now. Maybe we will get to hear something uh, day after tomorrow. Also. So today I will be mainly talking about this uh, dark energy sector, which actually comprises a maximum portion of this dark component of this energy. So where do we stand? We know that our universe observation suggests that our universe is at present accelerating and uh, the lambda CDM model, it is basically, the, it, it happens to be the simplest model who can explain this uh, acceleration. But this lambda CDM model, it suffers from this cosmological constant problem. And this tells us that we have to think beyond uh, lambda CDM model. And there are many two approaches which, which is adopted as an alternative to this lambda CDM model. One we, I, one we call it as a dynamical dark energy model. In this type of models, what we do is we consider a uh, particular form of uh, matter, matter sector, which we include in the, uh, in the, in the dynamics of the universe. And uh, the, this, this dynamical dark energy model is maybe a scalar field. It can be something else, which actually acts as a driver of this late time cosmic acceleration. And the, another, the other alternative is this modified gravity models where we actually uh, uh, change the um, Einstein-Hilbert action so that uh, we, we actually modify the Einstein-Hilbert action so that this can lead to our uh, late time acceleration. So I will be in this talk, I'll be talking mainly about this dynamical dark energy model. So if you consider a homogeneous and isotropic universe, and if you consider the special section to be flat, then the Einstein equations, one can write it in this form. I must emphasize that we have ex I have expressed these equations in terms of conformal time. And so this curly H actually represents a conformal Hubble parameter. So this rho A, it represents the energy density of any AX. This may be the radiation, this may be dark matter, this may be the dark energy, whatever components we consider that the universe is comprised of, all this the energy density of all these components will be given by this row, and Pa corresponds, uh, represents the corresponding pressure, pressure section. Now, since the total energy density of the universe is conserved, we will have these conservation equations for this sector. So, for simplicity, what we have, what I have considered here is that the, our universe comprises of only two components. One is a dark matter, and when I say this cold dark matter, it includes a normal baryonic matter as well. And we have this dark energy component, and these are the conservation equations for these two components. Now, the right, the zero on the right hand side indicates that these uh, sectors, the two dark sectors, are independent, and they are they are they are conserved independent, and they do not interact among themselves. Now, as we know that the dark energy, what it, what can be the nature of this dark energy component that is unknown, still unknown to us, and so it may happen. So as, since we don't know, it may happen that these two components are interacting among themselves. So what happens if we consider that these two dark sectors are interacting among themselves? In that case, now why, why should we consider this um, interaction or what is the usefulness? First of all, it will provide a more general scenario. As I said, that since you don't know anything about these dark components, it may happen that if, 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 if we consider an interaction between them, this will provide us a more general scenario to work with and may give rise to interesting cosmological implications. Another thing is that uh, it can elevate the cosmological coincidence problem. So we know that the dark energy, it has to dominate at later time. 
in fact, there are observational evidence that this uh, dark energy, it has dominated the cosmological dynamic. It has started dominating at around Z 0.7 or even lesser, even uh, at a lesser time. So if we consider that there is an interaction between this dark energy and dark matter component, this can elevate the cosmological co co coincidence problem to some extent, because uh, when you consider an interaction between two components, one component, it grows at the expense of the other. And so in that sense, it may be useful. So if you consider the interaction, then the conservation equations, which we have, which I've shown earlier, it will get modified and there will be a source term sitting on the right hand side of this equation. Now, this is in cosmology, usually the source term is chosen phenomenologically. Now, the usual choices are that this source term Q, this quantity A has appeared because I have expressed in conformal time. But this source term Q, it is either, when we choose it phenomenologically, we choose it either as a function of H times rho C or H times rho dark energy. Now, this is because from this equation, you can see that we have this um, dimension, if, if I think of it as dimensionally, then this is the dimension of energy density. And we have it, we have a quantity which should have the dimension of one by time. And the, means the first candidate which comes in our mind when we are doing cosmology, which is having the dimension of inverse of time is the Hubble parameter. So these are the usual choices when, where, where people consider that Q is either a function of H rho C or H rho dark energy or a combination of any of those. So for our model, uh, we have considered a dark energy dark matter interaction where we have chosen the uh, interaction term in this way, in this form, where it's proportional to this H rho dark energy. This is the four velocity of the dark matter sector, and beta is basically we call it the coupling strength. This is the factor which will this is basically determine the strength of interaction, how strong the interaction is among these dark energy components. And, Obviously, the sign of beta, signature of beta is also important because the way we have represented, if beta is positive, this will include, this will indicate that the flow is from dark matter to dark energy candidate. And uh, if beta is negative, the opposite will happen. And for an isotropic and homogeneous background, one can write uh, Q in this uh, convenient form. Now, this form of Q, is it so that we have only the dimensional analysis is only the reason that we are choosing Q in this factor? answer is no, because if one is interested to know the cosmological implications of this type of choices, one can look into this uh, review paper by B. Wong. It's a very nice review paper where all the cosmological implications of these different choices of this uh, um, interaction term has been explained very nicely. So what we are, what we want to do, we want to um, consider a cosmological model where we have this interaction term of this particular form, which we have chosen. And we want to study the dynamics of dark energy model. So for this, we have uh, make, made a particular, we have made a unjust. Um, we have chosen the uh, energy density for the dark energy in this form. But the reason for choosing this uh, raw dark energy in this form is that if we consider, if we frame this raw dark energy as uh, one can frame this raw dark energy or the dark energy energy density for the dark energy in, in terms of a scalar field um, along with the potential. And if we find out the corresponding potential, we find that this comes out to be a double exponential potential. And this, this type of double exponential potentials, they are very well studied uh, potentials in the context of inflation as well as for late time dark energy models as well. And uh, if we put uh, this uh, in, in some limit, it can actually give rise, it can give us back the power law function of the limit. So if we consider, if we apply this unjust to the interacting model, which we have considered, one can calculate the equation of state parameter. This will basically govern the dynamics of the dark energy model. And the equation of state parameter, it comes out in this form, where lambda and gamma are these model parameters and beta is the strength of interaction. So if we plot this W dark energy, this is basically uh, provides a few interesting features. For example, most of the dark energy models that we study, uh, they <laughs> actually they um, depict the lambda CDM model at present time. But this particular model, what it shows is that at this is this is plotted against A. So at earlier times, it was closer to the lambda CDM model, but as we go on 
as, as the inverse evolves, it will basically deviate from the lambda CDM model. And also, if we increase the strength of interaction, then also the deviation from the lambda CDM model is huge. And here we have chosen these values of beta arbitrarily because we, have, we just wanted to see what happens if we choose this beta. But we would like to know what can what values of beta are what what strength of interaction is actually allowed by observations. And for that, one has to resort to this uh, uh, background and perturbation analysis. So what we have done is for this particular model, we have chosen three different sets of model parameters. Beta we have chosen arbitrarily to start with. And lambda and gamma, we have actually performed this uh, chi-square analysis and we have obtained the best fit um, values of lambda and gamma using the Hubble data, supernova data, bio data, and, and the values come out to be close to 2.9, 4.9. So, so we have actually uh, rounded it off to three and five. And we have chosen this different sets of values of beta, lambda, and gamma to check what, what happens to the evolution. And with these values, if we plot the distribution parameter Q, which will show how the inverse is evolving, the distribution parameter Q, we see that again, this is plotted against A. So we find that at late time, the, uh, for different values, for these different combinations, the, mm, the, the evolution is quite different from the lambda CDM model. So since the evolution is quite different from lambda CDM model, we would like to understand whether it affects the structure formation or not. And for that, if we look at the evolution of perturbation equation, so this is a general uh, conformal gauge perturbation, perturbation from which she was uh, showing is started. But we have chosen synchronous gauge and if we choose that, the field, the equations come out in this form. So if we solve these equations, I'm not going into these details. If we solve this perturbation equation, delta C represents the density contrast for the matter sector, and this represents the density contrast for the dark energy sector. Uh, so we have, we have chosen the initial conditions, uh, the adiabatic initial conditions. So the initial conditions are chosen um, appropriately. And so if we plot the, if we, the results which we obtain is, this represents the, matter density contrast for the dark matter sector, means cold dark matter, which includes the normal baryonic matter as well. And this represents the, uh, the density contrast for the dark energy sector. But we find that this dotted point, it was uh, for the case one, that means when the strength of interaction was higher. Uh, and for that, we find that the, the density contrast, is, it is basically different from that of the uh, lambda CDM model. For, for reference, we have compared this with the lambda CDM model and find that the, if we choose this interaction to be higher, the density contrast, the growth of matter perturbation will be very much different and uh, from the lambda CDM model. And for dark energy sector, we find that initially the dark energy sector, for all these values, the dark energy sector will have an initial fluctuation and then finally it will set up, uh, finally it will uh, set up. If we see the effect on the CMB power, CMB temperature and metal power spectrum, again, we find that the, at lower multiple, it, the, it, it shows some features. And we know that in the Planck uh, spectrum, in the metal spectrum, uh, in, in, in the Planck spec, in the Planck temperature spectrum at lower multiples, we have some additional features, which the uh, lambda CDM model cannot explain. So it may happen that this kind of interacting models can explain those small bumps which we which actually get at the lower multiples. So again, we have compared this with the uh, lambda CDM model. You can see that this shows some additional features as compared to the lambda CDM model. And this will this, this shows that this type of interacting models are actually affecting the growth of matter perturbations. So we have also performed the um, observational, we have also tried to obtain the observational constraints on these various model parameters. For that, we have used the CMB, BO, and the Pentium data set. And these are the priors which we have used. And uh, I'm just showing the results. If we, uh, uh, this shows the one day, two day, and one day posterior distribution for these different cosmological parameters. Apart from that, I'll just, um, miss, uh, would like to concentrate on the value of beta. We have. We have tried to constrain the value of beta from the observational uh, data. And what we have found that the beta is equal to zero implies that there is no interaction. The beta is equal to zero value, it actually lies beyond the two sigma model. So the more the, the data, it actually is preferring a non-interacting model, at least at one sigma model. So these are the values we have obtained. So finally, I will conclude. So what we have found that 
if we consider an interacting dark energy and dark matter model, it has significant effect on the structure formation. For lower rate of interaction, the, um, the, the effect will be much lesser, but if we increase the rate of interaction, then one can show significant, uh, it can, one can see significant increase on the epoch of pollution and the beta factor, it has come out to be positive. I, I, I must mention that when we choose, we have chosen the prior, we have allowed negative values of beta as well, but it has come to be positive, which includes that the flow of energy is from dark matter to dark energy and uh, the, value of beta is equal to zero, it actually lies outside the constant. I'll stop here. Thank you. So any question? Yeah, so when... Uh... Hello. Thank you, that was a nice talk. Um, I have a question about this Hubble tension that you extract from the CMB. Now, this kind of model also changes the value of H0 that you get out of CMB. Now, does it go in the right direction? Does it make it the H naught larger? Uh, uh, as you can see that we couldn't, it, uh, this model couldn't solve the Hubble tension uh, exactly, but the value is little bit on the, I mean, it's, it, it's almost more or less uh, compatible with the Planck result because we have got, uh, got 67. Uh, the Planck result is this one. And then the supernova is something like 73. Yeah. Now, can this model raise the Planck result because this, yeah, that's what I'm saying. Yeah. This is, this is yeah, our result. Getting, yeah. So it's compatible with the Planck result because from the shoes data, we get around 73, 74. Yeah. So this has not, this particular model has not solved the Hubble tension, but maybe uh, since you have considered a toy model here, so maybe some- I think for Hubble, you'll need beta negative because you want to make uh, energy go from dark sector to the, uh, sorry, the dark energy to the dark matter. You want to disappear. Uh, no. Because no. Because if uh, if energy flows from dark energy to dark matter, then dark mm. energy will not dominate at current time because its oh. energy density will go and decrease. Yeah, but in a small way, so that it's presently what it is. But but just as a float, you can. I don't know. I mean, this is something maybe for the discussion. No, okay, then uh, we have to check with the uh, other values of beta, yeah. these negative values of beta. Yeah. Here we have considered positive values of beta mm. for the um, analytical results. Okay. Thank you. Uh, so just one curiosity is your mo is your like model a tracker model uh, actually we haven't checked it but uh, because for a tractor model one has to check this um, what we call is a gamma factor I means we have to consider the potential and for this potential we have to consider the uh, means gamma, omega yeah, omega. gamma yeah. so that we haven't checked so i will not be able to answer your question at present so Okay, because I have worked on tracker models and it seems like yours is also going in that direction. I haven't checked. I so haven't it can checked. be good check. Thank you. So I just have a, uh, so you took W to be W effective because when dark matter is not red shifting as one by AQ, you cannot just use W phi formula half phi dot square minus V of phi. No, means uh, I have, uh, I don't know whether I've got your question correctly or not. What definition have, of dark yeah. equation of state, what you used? Yeah. What we have considered is that we have just got two sectors. Hmm. One is the uh, dark matter. Uh, dark matter means cool dark matter, and another is the dark energy. So for yeah. cool dark matter... That I understand, but generally when you want to match with the observation, you have to do WD effective. Maybe we can discuss in the... In, in. Okay, let's thank... Uh, and, uh,